So today I want to talk about reading. Now, why do you want to talk about reading? Well, the reason is I've been training people for over a decade. And that means I've had a lot of conversations with beginners. I've seen people succeed. I've seen people drop out. I've seen people fail. And one of the red flags that comes up when I'm talking to somebody who's early on in their learning journey involves reading. Now, let me tell you how this conversation usually goes. Somebody will reach out to me and they'll say, hey, I want to learn topic X. Do you know of any good resources? And I'm usually willing to help with that and I'll recommend some resources. And a subset of these people will go look at the resource and they'll come back and they'll say, oh, that resource has a lot of reading in it. I learn best from video content. Can you recommend me some all video learning? Now, why is that a red flag? Well, there's a lot of reasons why this is a red flag. So let's go into it. And we're gonna start with learning science because to me, that's the most compelling point. A lot of people believe in the myth of preferred learning styles. Now, what is this myth? You'll hear people say, I'm a visual learner. I'm a hands-on learner. I'm an auditory learner. This is a style of learning because you can present content in a lot of different formats, video, written, diagrams, audio, hands-on practice. There's a lot of different components to learning effectively. And people mistakenly believe that one of those modalities is more effective for them than others. But let me clue you in. Science, they've done studies, doesn't exist. What matters is the content that you're learning and what those goals and outcomes are. Because some things are better presented in video, some things are better presented written. So if you're the type of person who says, I don't like reading, I only want video content, you are eliminating a lot of quality resources that would help you achieve your goals. And this is actually kind of obvious if you think about things like learning to play an instrument. You can watch videos of somebody playing the piano all day long, 365 days a year, and you'll never be a very good pianist. Because to do that, you not only need to see things like learn to read sheet music and how to position your hands and things like that, but you need to get actual time on the keyboard. And you also have to hear good music and good chord progression. And all of those things coming together, having the right skills with the right modality at the right time is what trains somebody to go from zero to being a successful instrument player. And this is no different in other disciplines like coding. So don't limit yourself because you think that you learn best from videos. Usually if you're not good at one of the other modalities, it's because of something else, like your learning habits. You're not taking notes correctly. You're not doing space repetition correctly. I have a whole free course on my site about how to effectively learn to code. So if you're struggling with some of these things, you know, go, go sign up for it. It's free. Now that's not the only reason science, you know, if that's not enough for you, let's talk about content because in tech stuff changes frequently. Most of your major languages have major releases every year. Some frameworks, especially on the web, they change quarterly or even faster. I know, if you've been learning to code and you've been watching a lot of YouTube videos that you have come across videos that are out of date. And that happens a lot. The reality of being in IT is that when new versions are coming out, they go through beta and alpha and pre-release stages, and then they are released. And during that time, the only resources that are up to date are usually the written documentation. So if you're somebody who's not willing to read or you're actively avoiding reading, you are never going to be as current as somebody who does because you're gonna be waiting for people to come out with video courseware. And that is usually a lagging thing because video is expensive, it's time consuming. I have videos in my courses and I can tell you when they make major updates to content, the written stuff gets fixed first and then I go and fix all the videos. So there's just no getting around this reading thing if you want your resources to be up to date. And finally, let's talk about efficiency. Most people read twice as fast as they listen, as they can consume video. So if you want to get concepts quickly, 
then reading is the pathway to get there because reading is a skill and as you do it more, you will get better at it and you will get faster at comprehension which is going to save you time and make you more efficient. And that's it for the learning process. Let's talk about what happens when you get your first job. So you get that first job and you're super happy. You're very excited. And what happens in the first couple days you get into that position? Well, you have to onboard. And most of your onboarding is going to be written documentation. Because let me clue you into something here. Most of your developer jobs for big companies, insurance companies, banks, big tech, doesn't matter. All of these companies have software applications that they have built that need to be maintained. And these companies are usually not in the education space. And internally, they do not have any videos. And I distinctly remember when I got one of my early jobs at a consulting company, they sent me out to a client of theirs that was in the Department of Defense. And I remember I went in there and I was like day two and the project manager comes over and they drop a binder on my desk that describes all of their systems, all of the things they do, all the procedures, everything that's being automated by this code base. And that thing was 200 pages of documentation. Now there's people who are experienced in this audience and they're gonna be like, wow, you're really lucky. You had documentation? Because that's the other thing you're going to find that there is no video on the job. You have to either read the code as the single source of truth. You have to read the documentation. When you're getting your tasks, you have to log into a project management system like Jira, and you are going to have to read tickets and you're going to have to read specifications. And if you are being asked to design something, you are going to have to write those specifications. Like a lot of people who aren't in the IT field really underestimate how much of your job is reading, especially, and to a lesser extent, writing documentation specs, issue reports, bug reports, solution fixes, all of those GitHub issues that you see on the open source projects where people are filing issues and people are responding. There is a ton of reading and writing and pretty much no video. So if you're sitting there and you're the type of person that says, I hate reading, huge red flag for me. It makes me want to take a step back and say, wow, when you get on the job, there's going to be a lot of reading. So if you really hate reading, this might not be the career for you. And now you've made it through your onboarding phase and you're going to spend the next two, five, seven years growing your skills. And you probably want to be promoted. You want to become a senior developer. You want to become a software architect like I was for many decades. Well, reading and to a lesser extent writing become even more important the higher you go up in those chains. So let's talk about documentation. Who do you think creates the documentation in the organization? It's usually senior professionals working with technical writers if they're lucky or doing it themselves if they're not fortunate enough to have a technical writing team. You also have to write all the specifications. So you're going to receive requests from the business users and those aren't going to be in tech speak. And all of those JIRA tickets, all of those project management things that you hand off to the junior developers, it's a senior technical person that is writing those. So reading and understanding the request and being able to translate that from business speak to tech speak is necessary. If you can't do that, there is a hard cap on how high you can advance in your career. We also have to talk again about currency. If you want to keep your skills current, if you want to be ahead of everybody else, part of your job as a senior staff member is to evaluate new technologies, new opportunities, and new ways of doing things. So you're going to spend a lot of time reading and doing research and going to conferences and reading technical papers. All these people right now with AI who are ahead of the curve, they've been reading white papers and technical papers, and they've been running these experiments on their own and then they take this back to their company and they talk about what they learned and they document their findings. So being able to do those tasks is something that makes you increasingly valuable. And while we're on the topic of AI, let's talk about code generation. Because as AI gets better at writing code, you are going to spend less time writing code and a lot more time 
reading it. Because AI does not produce perfect code. You have to be able to read and understand that code. You need to check it for performance problems. You need to check it for security problems. You need to check it for overall correctness. And how do you get AI to write good code? You write good specifications. You write good prompts. So again, that whole reading, writing back and forth, if AI does get better at writing substantially more code, you are going to spend more time reading and writing. <laughs> So you're going to have to deal with this either way if you want to advance in this career. At the end of the day, I just want to really reinforce that if you're just getting started and you have a negative attitude about reading written content, if you don't like doing it, that's something you really need to evaluate because there is so much of it, not only during effective learning, but throughout your career. And you don't have to enjoy everything you read. I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I read a ton of technical documentation and I don't get up in the morning and go, oh boy, I get to read a white paper today. It's not very fun, but it is a skill and it's something you can be effective at if you practice it. And that's where the red flag and the line kind of draws for me is when people say they don't like it and they actively seek to avoid it instead of getting better, instead of finding ways to work it into their routine in a healthy way, that tells me that they're probably not going to be very successful. And they're also, more importantly, probably not going to enjoy their job if they end up getting one. And I don't want that to happen to anybody. So take it seriously. Reading is fundamental. Happy coding.